the National Archives is talking about transparency and how the American people have a right to know. And that's why they want to get all these documents from President Trump. Well, why are they hiding 85% of documents about this unprecedented dispute with Trump? So the Justice Department and the Biden administration has engaged in unprecedented abuse of President Trump with the raid over uh, this manufactured document dispute. To bring you up to date on that, there's a grand jury investigating uh, Trump over that, uh, run by special counsel Jack Smith. Now, these are documents that the president had in his custody evidently from his time at the White House, uh, some of which we're told were more classified, and we're now being told he wasn't allowed to have any of that. And Judicial Watch had previously engaged in litigation against um, or over records that Bill Clinton had kept in his sock tour that were uh, obviously classified and uh, should have been turned over to archives. And the court in that case, and the Justice Department's position in that case was, Judicial Watch, you're out of luck. You know, the president has discretion to uh, designate any documents he wants as personal. And the Justice Department lawyer in the court hearing in this big case uh, told the court that uh, if the president has documents after he leaves the Oval Office, uh, they're presumptively personal. But they changed the rules to target, harass, and abuse Trump. And the reports are uh, that it was uh, generated um, by uh, political appointees of Joe Biden and the Justice Department. Uh, the FBI wasn't too keen on doing this. Of course, you know, this is bureaucrats defending, um, you know, pointing fingers at each other because they recognize something was off about the way Trump was treated. So there's a lot of, lot of criminality in my view, not by Trump, but by the abuse of Trump uh, by the Justice Department and frankly to National Archives, which again, uh, uh, fought us to keep documents away from us and in the hands of Bill Clinton, even though they were obviously, quote, presidential records under their current analysis, but changed their tune when it came to Trump. And so we've been asking for documents about uh, the uh, Trump uh, dispute with the archives, and they've been withholding all, virtually all of the documents we've been asking for. 85% of the records that were responsive to our requests have been withheld from Judicial Watch and the American people. We had sued um, for the records back in, when did we sue? Uh, we sued last year in August of 2022, so it was shortly after the raid, I suspect. And uh, since then, 1,276 12, pages of over 8,000 records about the document dispute and raid on the home of President Trump have been released. So that's only 15% of the records. And uh, all the records are up on our internet site, so you can look at them there. And we had sued for all the records regarding the referral from the National Archives to the Justice Department, an unprecedented referral regarding the records management procedures of former President Trump. Um, this request includes all related records communications between any official or employee of the archives and any official or employee of the Department of Justice or any other branch, department, agency, or office of the federal government. That would mean the White House. Any records regarding the retrieval of records from President Trump or any individual or entity in acting on his behalf by the National Archives and Records Administration. This request includes related records of communications between any official or employee of NARA the National Archives, and President Trump or any individual or entity acting on his behalf. Now, the records uncovered by Judicial Watch's lawsuit include information further confirming how the Biden White House was directly involved in the dispute by initiating uh, a special access uh, request that advanced the FBI investigations of Trump's records. So typically, these are Trump's records. Uh, they should have been treated as personal records. He turned over 15 boxes of records. Uh, and he was asserting executive privilege, which uh, it, it was even beyond executive privilege documents because they were, practically speaking, personal records as precedent uh, from, uh, and, and prior Justice Department and National Archives uh, positions had been. And so the Biden White House intervened and waived the executive privilege, allowing the FBI investigation to advance. 
So without that key intervention by the Biden White House, uh, the FBI investigation wouldn't have advanced, not that they wanted it to advance, and the Justice Department would have had less excuse to raid his home. Although given the way it happened, probably they didn't need an excuse, they were just gonna do it no matter what. Uh, but so the whole point here is, or a big point here is, that the National Archives is talking about transparency and how the American people have a right to know and that's why they want to get all these documents from President Trump. Well, why are they hiding 85% of documents about this unprecedented dispute with Trump? And we haven't even started. I don't think we've sued for records about the dispute with Biden. And we now know at the same time they were pretending Trump was a criminal, Biden had records and they knew he had records. And records he had no business having because some of them were classified from his time as a senator. No raid of Trump, by the way, no raid of Biden, by the way. No subpoena. Now I guess there's a, a, a special counsel just looking at the documents issue. They don't want to look at the Hunter issue and the RICO corruption there. What a racket the Justice Department is running against President Trump. What a racket the National Archives is running against President Trump. And to me, it's naked election interference. It's brazen election interference. And they're trying to jail him. I mean, that's the goal here is to put him in jail, whether it be through this investigation. Obviously, the New York indictment's already out there. Uh, they're planning in Georgia, it sounds like, um, the leftist prosecutor down there to indict him for daring to raise questions about the way Georgia conducted their elections there, as he has a right to do not only as president, but as a candidate. I mean, the left has decided the rules of the road don't matter anymore in America. We're gonna jail our political opponents. Doesn't matter if, he, if he's a former president. Doesn't matter if he's running for president. We're gonna jail him. And it's gonna be obviously political, but we don't care because the media is not going to do anything about it. Congress is, relatively speaking, hapless. So at least we're in court trying to educate Americans about the corruption here. But this is a serious threat to the rule of law in our constitutional republic, these, these abuses. And just because people aren't talking about this records dispute much anymore doesn't mean it's not important. I mean, they're trying to prosecute him over it. They had Mike Pence in the other day. Again, another, just the Justice Department and the Biden administration just blowing up the idea of executive privilege. I mean, executive privilege typically is advice that the president uh, seeks and receives while he's president is protected. It's, it's just part of our constitutional system. And now discussions between a president and vice president aren't even protected. Why? Because it's Trump. Why? Because they were disputing and there was the issue at hand was the dispute about the 2020 election. So you, if you're a president and you ask the wrong questions or seek the wrong advice or seek advice about the wrong issue, namely disputing your Democratic opponent, they're going to try to jail you. That's what this is about. Again, this is not about, oh, you should vote for Trump. This is Trump should not be punished and abused and have his civil rights violated because he's engaged in politics and he's successfully engaged in politics. He obviously was president. He's likely to be, you know, the polls are, he's probably going to be the nominee. I don't know that for sure for the Republicans again. And they're trying to jail him. What an embarrassment to America, right? I mean, they're pretending, you know, the media is pretending, you, pretending it's normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. Other countries must be looking at us thinking, well, you know, well, the United States used to be something special. No more. It's just as bad as the rest of the world. In terms of disrespect for the rule of law, jailing political opponents. We're getting more like Moscow and Beijing every day. And thank God Judicial Watch is still around and some other 
intrepid investigators and a little bit of noise from Congress about some of these abuses, but not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. But we're in court. We're not going away. We've got more lawsuits about this abuse of Trump. More lawsuits are coming about other abuses of Trump. So uh, you can bet Judicial Watch will never stand down uh, when it comes to this egregious assault on our Republican form of government. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.